Hello, PEI! <laughs> Good, uh, 
You're, you're, you're a ringer. You're a ringer. Anyone else? Yeah, that's a, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> um, 14. 13, that deserves a cheer. 14 pieces of legislation. 14 pieces, and we're talking about groundbreaking legislation. It is here, thanks to the Greens that were elected, that there is a Poverty Elimination Strategy Act, the first of its kind in Canada. To eliminate, because people on PEI believe that poverty, food insecurity, homelessness can be eliminated. We do not have to live with those conditions forever. It was here, second to last, second to last. Okay. <laughs> It was here that the Climate, and I'm going to underscore this word, Leadership Act was passed. The strongest legislation in Canada to get us to net zero. I'm telling you, it is possible, and it's possible when you elect Greens. And so when people here want to know what does it mean in their lives to elect Greens, they can look to those um, acts, they can look to the 12 others, and they can look to the difference that Greens make in their communities. Because in, in addition to the big thinkers and the innovation and the strong legislation, the groundbreaking legislation, you also have someone that is waking up day in and day out, thinking about their community, thinking about the people they elected, helping to unlock resources for them, helping to make sure that their communities are better off every single day. That's what you get when we elect Greens. And so it's time to send these folks to Ottawa. Yeah. One last reflection. Uh, and again, coming back to the extraordinary period that PEI ha has experienced since Greens were elected. Universal basic income. Uh, we call it guaranteed livable income. And I know that you've got the hottest piece of a, you know, a project, let's say, uh, waiting uh, to get a federal partner so that you can you can get it um, you can get it rolled out here in PEI. Uh, for those watching nationally, uh, Prince Edward Island again, unanimously across party lines, you know, all speaking with one voice. The legislature here, you know, they unanimously uh, passed and make sure that got. Um, a uh, and uh, for, uh, for the rollout or the study, I want to say the study, the, the, pilot. the pilot, I love the word, the pilot, the pilot of, for UBI here on the island. Um, they need federal support for that. So again, imagine if there are more Greens in Ottawa pushing the other parties, working with the other parties to build the consensus around supporting that pilot. UBI, and again, we call it guaranteed livable income because we're talking truly about a livable amount of income, is an idea whose time has come. The people of PEI have recognized it, the consensus is building, and this is exactly the kind of project that a government working in cooperation, federal government working in cooperation with the provincial level of government should be able to deliver for the people of Canada. So Greens are a party of cooperation, of collaboration, of innovation, uh, and every time we send a green to Ottawa, good things happen for local communities, good things happen for provinces, good things happen for our country. And I'm so excited uh, to be here to be able to support these candidates and also other candidates from the Atlantic provinces that will be joining us uh, later today. Alors, c'est un énorme plaisir d'être ici. C'est un énorme plaisir uh, de soutenir uh, nos candidats et candidates uh, ici sur uh, l'île de Prince Edouard. Uh, je vous invite uh, tous à, 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 à connaître vos candidats et candidates. Je vous invite de connaître la différence que les Verts font partout au pays, dans le monde, dans les vies uh, des citoyens et citoyennes de notre pays. Uh, I invite people to get to know their local green candidates, get to know the difference that they have made in people's lives all across the country, get to know the difference that they could make in the next parliament in terms of creating a culture of positivity, cooperation and collaboration, and just plain hard work. Um, and I thank you very much for being here today. I thank you so much to every single Islander that showed up today to, you know, encourage our candidates to raise their voices in solidarity. It's wonderful to see you. Uh, go PEI.
I love small islands. <laughs> Okay, my, my pleasure. Okay, so I'm going to uh, call up uh, Alex first. Alex, you've got uh, a minute. I love this. I love being on the other end of this, giving the time pressure to someone else. You've got a minute to introduce yourself to the folks and uh, introduce yourself to Canada. Alex. Hey, everyone. My name is Alex Clark, and I represent the riding uh, Egmont in this election. And <laughs> That's a that's a hard that's a hard one to follow, but it's all about what she just said. It's collaboration, it's hard work for our community, and that's what I've always believed in, and that's what I've always been fighting for. I'm a proud green for the fact that we are all out there working hard for our communities and we believe in the small town and we want to see it thrive and I want to see it thrive and that's why I'm standing here today and thank you all so much for being here. This is amazing and this wind is a reminder that I need a haircut and <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Okay. Darcy, you're up next. Hello, my name is Darcy Lanche. I'm your Green Party candidate for Charlottetown. Charlottetown! <laughs> Charlottetown is the urban riding on Prince Edward Island, even though it's a very small urban riding, it's still the urban riding on Prince Edward Island. So I'm really happy to represent all the people who live there, especially the tenants. There's 5,000 tenants who live on Prince Edward Island, and I've mostly been doing my work this winter on their behalf with my old apartment. But in Charlottetown, we have some issues. They're mostly around poverty and, um, and a lack of housing, and we're addressing those issues, working really hard on it. I've been working with uh, with other people, especially Green MLAs in the city of Charlottetown, to get things done. Because Greens get things done. I love that. I love that. That is one of my taglines, right? Catchphrases. Let's get her done. <laughs> All right, Anna Keenan, you're up next. Thank Hello. you very much. <laughs> such an honor to have the leader of the Green Party of Canada in my riding, in our riding. So welcome to Malta. Um, I am a mom. I live on a large rural property out in St. Anne's. Uh, we have a small business as a family, and I've worked as a climate activist in international organizations for 15 years now. In this campaign, I'm hearing time and time again at the doors, it is health care. And the women who are working on the front lines of our healthcare system, they are strained under the pressure. We're missing one in every four nurses on the island. There's provincial challenges with that. There's also a lot of federal money that needs to be flowing into our healthcare systems. And you can count on the Greens to be champions for fully funding a world class healthcare system. <laughs> Aside from healthcare, it is also affordable housing. We've got people who are worried about seniors downsizing out of rural homes, you know, large rural properties, and they're wondering, how can I find an accessible apartment to live in in my retirement years? We're finding young people who are struggling to make ends meet on minimum wage jobs, and the minimum wage is too low. You can't live on it on PEI. And an affordable apartment, affordable rent is not $1,600 a month. We need to solve the housing crisis, and the Greens have plans for addressing the housing crisis. And then on climate change, climate change is the issue of our generation. It's the issue I've worked on professionally for 15 years. We've got a lot of promises coming from the other parties, but we're not seeing results. And we are going to push for getting results and getting our emissions down in the way that the science says that we require. In this election, we're hoping it's a green breakthrough in Multec. I came second in the last election. We're getting amazing results door to door. And you know, I don't know how this election is going to shake out on Monday next week, um, but my hope is that we can add a little bit of diversity to you know, that slate of four politicians that we send from PEI to Ottawa. We don't necessarily need four representatives that are the same age group, the same gender, and the same party to represent our very diverse island. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you so much. Michael. Up to you. And uh, who else is jealous about this? Have you ever seen? I have not seen the Green Moon Breakthrough yet. This is, uh, you know, 
This is this is something I covet. Michael. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, hopefully we'll start some fashion trends here and <laughs> carry it on into the election. There you go. <laughs> First off, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we very much appreciate you having having you here on our island. Um, my riding is Cardigan, Michael Michael McLean. Uh, well, there's some long Woo, Cardigan. Messaging on working together and addressing some long-standing issues is particularly important. Islanders look out for each other. They protect each other. We want to look out for our economy and give a voice to those who haven't traditionally had one. All across our ridings and our islands, there's a lot of people who have been hoping for change and are looking to the Green Party to deliver. The Green Party has done well provincially, and I think we're going to see a surge into our federal politics as well with that. And I really again to the MA for coming here and accentuating this change in trend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, anyways, we oh, oh the question is coming. Okay, so I'm going with that. I'm going to take some questions. Um, I mean, I'm all fired up just from that. And I will say again, uh, you know, again, tying back into that story of my family, the things that people care about really are, are so much the same uh, here and across the country. You hear the same thing. People want to be able to live a life of dignity from the first day to the last and to know that everyone uh, in their community can as well. They want to know that there is going to be true action on the climate. They want to know that, as Anna said, that the word is trans to action and they want to know that we are going to finally do the work on reconciliation on dismantling systemic discrimination on ensuring that we have a culture in ottawa that is more inclusive and more open they want these things and um thanks to all of you good folks and the people who elected greens in pei they know that when greens are elected those are the things that happen so thank you so much uh, thank you so much for your hard work and thank you for the example that you are setting for people all across the country about what can happen when people work together. There is nothing that we can't do here in Canada um, that you across Canada that you haven't done in PEI and that other countries haven't done. We absolutely can do it. I know that we have that within us. You've proven that we have that within us and I thank you for that. Question. <laughs> Our online question A, one question, one follow-up from Adam Harris with the New Brunswick Telegraph Journal. Hi there, Ms. Paul. Thanks for taking our questions. I hope you can hear me here. Uh, I'm told you're not going to visit uh, Fredericton, New Brunswick. I, I wanted to know why and whether the Fredericton candidate told you not to visit. Uh, so I don't know. Okay, okay. So the question is about uh, the visit, uh, the visit here uh, to uh, to PEI. Um, I congratulate. You know, again, we are a very innovative group. As you know, I've spent most of my time in uh, the Toronto uh, riding that I'm trying to win. I mean, you all know the candidates behind me know, and those of you who have run for us or helped uh, those of uh, those of us who have run in this province and others know that every time we win a seat, particularly under this first past the post system, it takes a lot of work. Uh, it takes a lot of work and you know what every time we do it we're making history in this country and so uh, i have been spending most of my time post well not even post we're still in the fourth wave of the pandemic but at least i've had some time to be out in the community i haven't had any time any opportunity to do that uh, because i was elected in the second wave and we've had two more since then uh, and, but we really wanted to come out there we had such extraordinary candidates running for us across the atlantic uh, and so we are doing what Greens do best, we innovate. First, we're bringing uh, candidates here from New Brunswick, we're bringing candidates here from Nova Scotia. I see one there already, hello Thomas. Uh, we have our candidates here in PEI. This gives us a chance to be together. It gives us a chance uh, to support each other uh, and it gives us a chance to do that uh, over the next uh, day and a half. Uh, so this is the place that I chose uh, to come. Uh, I won't be uh, going to uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, but New Brunswick and Nova Scotia are coming to me and to us. Uh, <laughs> and I think that's wonderful. And so, and as I, and, um, and as I did say, I want to make sure that wherever I go, that it is to help and not to distract. 
Um, I certainly understand uh, if there are candidates that feel that it might be a distraction for me to be there. I mean, I we've been very transparent. I, I certainly have been uh, about um, you know acknowledging that the and that there was the controversy over the last few months has been a distraction for some. So uh, we're here. We want to make sure that we're supporting our candidates. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, whatever we do gets them a little closer to getting elected. And I'm very excited uh, to have this many Greens it together in one place at one time. This is the most Greens that I've been with in one space uh, since I've been elected, and it is a beautiful thing. Just uh, as a follow-up to, to that same thing, did the Fredericton candidate tell you not to visit? Um, did she cite that you could be a distraction? Well, it's... Uh, or working out the technology. Uh, in, in the case of uh, the Fredericton uh, campaign, uh, Nicole is working incredibly hard uh, to win that seat. Uh, that, that seat is still a, an incredible, a very winnable seat for us, but it was a slim margin the last time. It's going to be a slim one this time. Uh, both she and I recognize uh, that that is a particular race and uh, that you know emotions are still running high. It's still a sensitive issue. And again, my job, the reason that I'm still here, I have hung on is really for the candidates, these extraordinary people who have put everything into running, everything into their races, uh, that would be extraordinary representatives for their community and that would make Canadian politics um, at the federal level a better place, a more cooperative place, and frankly would just elevate the tone uh, of the work and uh, the culture of, uh, of the House of Commons. And so my job is to make sure that whatever I'm doing uh, supports them, that it doesn't distract them. And I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I lost one vote for one of our candidates. Uh, so in the case of Fredericton, uh, I recognize again that that is a, that is a campaign alone. I respect that. Um, and I wish Nicole uh, the very best. I think that she'd be Okay, so, um, so I think that that's it for me. I'm going to go now mingle with uh, the good folks. Uh, thanks for the you, John. Do you have a question? We definitely will. I think we're going to wrap up the live press conference. Okay, thank you to those who joined us online on CC. It's good to be here, PEI. Thanks for having me.